Unix, guards, please bring me Queen Vashti, that I may show her beauty to the people. Yes, your majesty, as you wish, your highness. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus which reigned, from India even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces. That in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces, being before him. Also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus, see the book of Esther 1-10. to Kindly note that we will primarily be using the King James Version of the Holy Bible throughout this series. Please note that most of the dialogues in this film are a fictionalized representation of the Biblical Book of Esther. It is advised to consult the Bible directly for a more accurate and comprehensive understanding of the events and the words spoken by the characters. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded thus. Bring me Queen Vashti, that I may show her beauty to the people. Palace guard, follow the eunuchs and find out why it's taking them long to bring Queen Vashti to me. Certainly, your majesty. Come in. Queen Vashti, the king has asked you to go before him, the people and the princes. For he would like to show them your beauty, for you are fair to look on. I will tell you what I told the eunuchs. I will not be paraded like a trophy before your drunken guests. My dignity as a queen cannot be compromised. As you wish, my queen. Your Highness, Queen Vashti has refused to come and stand before you. The eunuchs came to announce the same thing before all of my guests. How dare she refuses to obey a royal command. Vashti's disobedience cannot go unpunished. What shall we do unto the Queen Vashti according to law, because she hath not performed the commandment of the King Ahasuerus by the Chamberlains? Vashti the Queen hath not done wrong to the King only, but also to all the princes, and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the King Ahasuerus. For this deed of the Queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported, the King Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the Queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. Queen Vashti's actions may set a bad example for all wives. She should be banished. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memucan. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Hega the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them, and let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Banish Queen Vashti, I need a new queen. Gather beautiful young virgins from the kingdom.
I have lost my title and privileges as the queen of this vast kingdom, and I have also been banished from the kingdom. I didn't think standing up for myself would have such dire consequences. The king has refused to even look at me, and he has refused to see things from my perspective instead he simply banished me. I wonder if he ever truly loved me or I was just something that he liked to parade before the princes and people. Now in Shushan the palace there was a certain Jew, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace, to the custody of Hegai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house, to the custody of Hegai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her her things for purification, with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her, out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther, my child, remember what I told you. Please don't tell anyone that you are a Jew. Yes, uncle. You're not alone, my child, for I will sit at the palace gate daily and most importantly, the Lord is with you. Thank you, Uncle Mordecai. May the Lord bless and keep you always, my child. I will continue to pray for the will of God to be done in your life. Amen. Thank you, Uncle Mordecai. Come in, Esther. Don't be afraid. I am Haggai, the eunuch and keeper of the women. You have found favor in my eyes and I will make your stay here as comfortable as possible. Thank you, Haggai. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house, to know how Esther did, and what should become of her. Now when every maid's turn was come to go into King Ahasuerus, after that she had been twelve months, according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odors, and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king, whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women, to the custody of Shashgaz, the king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she were called by name. So Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head, and made her queen instead of Vashti. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her, for Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. Esther, you are more beautiful and wiser than all the others. You shall be my queen. Thank you, your highness. Thank you, Lord. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigton and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth, and sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out, therefore they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the chronicles before the king. Has Haman arrived yet? Yes, your majesty, he's waiting for you over there. Ah, Haman. As you're aware I have promoted you, Haman the son of Hamedatha the Agagite, and advanced you, and set your seat above all the princes. Oh, thank you your majesty. Long live the king. 
And all the king's servants, that were in the king's gate, bowed, and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? You should bow down to Haman like the rest of us. Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman, to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. King Ahasuerus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws, therefore it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business, to bring it into the king's treasuries. Here's my ring, take it Haman the son of Hamedith the Agagite. The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, in the name of King Ahasuerus was it written, and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces, to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish, all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes, and put on sackcloth with ashes, and went out into the midst of the city, and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. What sort of a decree is this one that is aimed at destroying the Jews? Haman, the Jews' enemy, has instructed all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish, all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved. And she sent Raymond to clothe Mordecai, and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. So Haddock went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews, to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king, to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. And Haddock came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Haddock, please write down the following and give it to Mordecai. Yes, my queen. All the king's servants, and the people of the king's provinces, do know, that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live, but I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. This is the letter from Queen Esther. She's forbidden from going before the king unless he calls for her. He may put her to death if she goes into the inner court and he doesn't hold out the golden scepter to her. Respond to Esther by writing down the following, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. My queen, please read the letter from Mordecai. Mordecai ended by saying, Esther, you were chosen for a reason. Perhaps it is to save our people. 
return to Mordecai with this answer, Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. Yes, my queen. So Mordecai went his way, and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now it came to pass on the third day, that Esther put on her royal apparel, and stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the gate of the house. And it was so, when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight, and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near, and touched the top of the scepter. What wilt thou, Queen Esther? And what is thy request? It shall be even given thee to the half of the kingdom. If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. At the banquet of wine. What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition, and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king hath said. Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends, and Zeresh his wife. Look at the glory of my riches, and the multitude of my children, and all the things wherein the king had promoted me, and how he has advanced me above the princes and his servants. Moreover, yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself, and tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon, then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. Brilliant idea Zeresh, we all came up with this idea earlier on. We must teach Mordecai a lesson. No one will ever dare to disrespect you again, Haman. Brilliant idea. On that night could not the king sleep. I asked you to bring the book of records of the chronicles, that they be read before me. And it was found written, that Mordecai had told of Bithana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. What honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? There is nothing done for him. Who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house, to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Behold, Haman standeth in the court, let him come in. What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? To whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? For the man whom the king delighteth to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king useth to wear, and the horse that the king readeth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man with all whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Make haste, and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew, that sitteth at the king's gate, let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai, and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate. But Haman hasted to his house mourning, and having his head covered, 
and Haman told Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains, and hasted to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom. If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request, for we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Who is he, and where is he, that durst presume in his heart to do so? The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Behold also, the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. On that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman the Jews' enemy unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. My king, please put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite, and his device that he had devised against the Jews. If it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Behold, I have given this to the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, for the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month, that is, the month of on, on the three and twentieth day thereof. And it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews, and to the lieutenants, and the deputies and rulers of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia, and hundred twenty and seven provinces, unto every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language, and to the Jews according to their writing, and according to their language. And Mordecai wrote in the king Ahasuerus' name, and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by posts on horseback, and riders on mules, camels, and young dromedaries. Wherein the king granted the Jews which were in every city to gather themselves together, and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish, all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. And in every province, and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Now in the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, 
though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus, to lay hand on such as sought their hurt. And no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. And all the rulers of the provinces, and the lieutenants, and the deputies, and officers of the king, helped the Jews, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces, for this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, and slaughter, and destruction, and did what they would unto those that hated them. The Jews have slain and destroyed five hundred men in Shushan the palace, and the ten sons of Haman, what have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee, or what is thy request further? And it shall be done. If it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. And the king commanded it so to be done. And the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. Because Haman the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them, and had cast pure, that is, the lot, to consume them, and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. And the king Ahasuerus laid a tribute upon the land, and upon the isles of the sea. And all the acts of his power and of his might, and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, whereunto the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was next unto king Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed. Wherein the king granted the Jews which were in every city to gather themselves together, and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish, all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. In a land where power and intrigue were woven into the very fabric of society, there arose a remarkable woman named Esther. The book of Esther, nestled within the pages of the Old Testament, is more than a historical account. It's a timeless story resonating with lessons crucial for our modern lives. Esther, an orphaned Jewish girl, teaches us that our beginnings need not dictate our destiny. Her rise from obscurity to royalty reminds us that potential resides within us all. Esther's audacious move reveals the power of courage in the face of adversity. It urges us to confront our fears and act boldly when confronted with injustice. The book of Esther warns us against complacency in the presence of evil. Esther's actions prompt us to stand against discrimination and hatred, even when it risks personal sacrifice. Esther's triumph over Haman teaches us that righteousness prevails, even in the darkest hours. It underscores the importance of collective action and defeating injustice. The relevance of Esther's story in our world is undeniable. It reminds us that we must remain vigilant against bigotry, oppression, and intolerance. For believers, the book of Esther offers a blueprint for behavior. It encourages us to show compassion, protect the vulnerable, and uphold justice, mirroring God's love for his creation. Esther's story cautions us against the danger of silence and inaction in the face of evil. We must remember that our actions, or lack thereof, have consequences. In essence, the book of Esther teaches us that we all have a role to play in shaping our world. It calls us to rise above our circumstances, exhibit unwavering courage, and stand firmly against injustice. Esther's legacy is a reminder that our actions can alter the course of history, shining a beacon of hope in a world where darkness seeks to prevail. Modern Day Discussion on Esther's Legacy Thank you all for coming today. I thought it would be inspiring to discuss the book of Esther and its relevance to our lives today. Absolutely, Sarah. Esther's story has always fascinated me. It's a much more than a historical account. 
Esther's journey reminds us that our past doesn't define us. We can overcome our circumstances. Her courage is awe-inspiring. It challenges us to stand up against injustice when we see it, even if it's risky. Esther's story warns us about the dangers of discrimination and hatred. It's our duty to protect those at risk. Good triumphed over evil in the end, and it shows that justice prevails even in the darkest times. In a world filled with conflicts and intolerance, we can learn from Esther's bravery and fight against bigotry. To become like Esther, we must show compassion, protect the vulnerable, and stand up for what's right, just as God calls us to do. Esther's story warns us not to be passive observers when we see injustice. We have a responsibility to act. Before we conclude, let's end with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the timeless lessons from the story of Esther. Help us to be courageous, compassionate, and active in promoting justice in our world today, just as Esther did. May her legacy inspire us to make a difference. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Here are the key verses from the book of Esther in the King James Version, KJV. Esther 4.14b says, And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Esther 7, 3 says, Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. Esther 8.16 says, The Jews had light, and gladness, and joy, and honor. Esther 9.28b says, And that they, the Jews should keep these two days according to their writing, and according to their appointed time every year. As we reflect on the lessons learned from the book of Esther, we find ourselves immersed in a story that transcends time and offers profound wisdom for our lives today. First and foremost, Esther's unwavering courage reminds us that, in the face of adversity, we must summon our inner strength to stand up for what is right. Like Esther, we may find ourselves in situations where we are called upon to act boldly, even if it means taking risks. Esther's story also teaches us the importance of fighting against discrimination and hatred. In a world where prejudice persists, we must emulate Esther's determination to combat injustice, regardless of where it may rear its ugly head. Moreover, Esther's triumph over Haman serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us that righteousness can prevail even in the darkest of times. It's a testament to the enduring power of good over evil, a message that should resonate in our hearts. Esther's ability to unite her people underscores the value of unity in the face of adversity. As we navigate a world filled with divisions, we must remember that our collective strength can bring about positive change and confront challenges head on. And let us not forget the lesson of action. Esther didn't merely pray for change. She fasted, she approached the king, and she took tangible steps to make a difference. This reminds us that faith and prayer are essential but they must be accompanied by action and determination. In conclusion, the book of Esther beckons us to be courageous, to fight injustice, to seek justice, to foster unity, and to take action when our principles demand it. These lessons, woven into Esther's story, serve as a timeless source of inspiration and guidance, urging us to be people of character and conviction in our own lives. Key lessons learned from the main characters in the Book of Esther. King Ahasuerus, also known as King Xerxes I, is a prominent figure in the Book of Esther in the Bible. Here are some lessons and insights that can be drawn from his actions and decisions in the biblical narrative. 1. Impulsivity. King Ahasuerus is often depicted as impulsive in his decision-making. His hasty banishment of Queen Vashti without due consideration of her actions sets the stage for the events in the book. This teaches us the importance of measured and thoughtful decision-making. 2. Influence of advisors. Ahasuerus seems heavily influenced by his advisors, particularly Haman. This highlights the need for leaders to be cautious and discerning in choosing their advisors, as their counsel can have far-reaching consequences. 3. Responsibility for actions. Although he was manipulated by Haman, Ahasuerus bears responsibility for signing the decree to annihilate the Jews. This reminds us that leaders must take responsibility for their actions and not blindly follow the advice of others. 4. 
Change and Redemption Ahasuerus later allows Queen Esther to intervene and save the Jewish people. This shows that leaders can change course, acknowledge their mistakes, and seek redemption. It also underscores the importance of courageous individuals who speak truth to power. 5. Importance of Justice Ahasuerus agrees to Haman's sons being hanged upon Esther's request. This teaches us about the importance of justice and accountability, even when it involves the actions of high-ranking officials. 6. The Power of Mercy Ultimately, Ahasuerus shows mercy by sparing the Jews, highlighting the power of forgiveness and compassion in leadership. It's important to note that Ahasuerus is not always portrayed as a good king in the Bible, but rather as a complex character who makes both impulsive and just decisions. The lessons learned from his actions emphasize the importance of wise leadership, responsibility, and the potential for redemption and justice even in challenging situations. Interpretations of his character and decisions may vary among different commentaries and scholars. Queen Vashti 1. Respect for Dignity Vashti's refusal to appear before the king when summoned, though it led to her banishment, teaches us about the importance of maintaining one's dignity and not compromising one's values. 2. Standing against injustice. Vashti's actions can be seen as a stand against the objectification of women. Her refusal to be paraded before the king and his guests sends a message about the need to resist actions that demean or devalue individuals. 3. Consequences of defiance. Vashti's story serves as a reminder that standing up against authority, even for just reasons, may come with consequences. It underscores the need to carefully consider the potential outcomes of one's actions. Queen Esther 1. Courage in adversity Esther's willingness to approach the king, risking her life to save her people, teaches us about the importance of courage in the face of adversity. 2. Strategic diplomacy Esther's approach to revealing Haman's plot, using careful timing and persuasion, demonstrates the effectiveness of strategic diplomacy in achieving one's goals. 3. The power of prayer. Esther's initial request for her people to fast and pray before she approached the king underscores the significance of seeking divine guidance and strength in difficult circumstances. 4. The strength of leadership Esther's transformation from an orphaned girl to a queen who risks her life to save her people teaches us about the strength of leadership and the importance of using one's position for the greater good. Mordecai. 1. Loyalty and integrity. Mordecai's refusal to bow to Haman, even at great personal risk, emphasizes the importance of loyalty to one's principles and integrity in the face of tyranny. 2. Vigilance and awareness. Mordecai's vigilance in uncovering the plot against the king and his ability to communicate this information highlight the importance of being aware of one's surroundings and potential threats. 3. Support for loved ones. Mordecai's care for Esther, his cousin, serves as an example of the responsibility we have to support and protect our loved ones. Haman. 1. Unchecked pride and arrogance. Haman's extreme pride and demand for homage teach us about the dangers of unchecked arrogance and how it can blind individuals to the consequences of their actions. 2. Deceit and manipulation. Haman's manipulation of King Ahasuerus and his scheming to carry out a massacre illustrate the destructive power of deceit and manipulation in leadership. 3. The pitfalls of revenge. Haman's personal vendetta against Mordecai and his plot to annihilate the Jews show the destructive nature of seeking revenge without considering the broader consequences. 4. Lack of empathy. Haman's callousness toward the suffering his decree would cause reflects the importance of empathy and the need for leaders to consider the human impact of their decisions. 5. Overconfidence in power. Haman's belief that his position and influence were invincible serves as a reminder that even the most powerful can fall when they become overly confident and fail to anticipate challenges. 6. The role of hubris in downfall. Haman's ultimate downfall, hanged on the very gallows he built for Mordecai, serves as a cautionary tale about the role of hubris in one's eventual undoing. 7. The consequences of discrimination. Haman's discrimination against the Jewish people resulted in his own downfall, highlighting the negative repercussions of prejudice and discrimination in society. 8. The destructiveness of pride and envy Haman's downfall, driven by his pride and envy, serves as a cautionary tale about the destructive nature of these vices and the harm they can bring to oneself and others. Haman's character in the Book of Esther offers lessons about the dangers of pride, revenge, manipulation, 
and discrimination, serving as a cautionary example of the destructive impact of such traits in leadership and personal conduct. Each of these characters in the Book of Esther offers valuable lessons in courage, integrity, diplomacy, and the consequences of one's choices. Their stories provide rich insights into leadership, ethics, and the complexities of navigating challenging situations. Zeresh, Haman's wife, and his friends and family, lesson, the impact of association. Zeresh and Haman's associates condoned his wicked plans, highlighting the importance of choosing our associations wisely and being mindful of the company we keep. Memucan is a minor character in the Book of Esther, specifically mentioned in Esther 1.16-21. While his role is limited, we can still draw a lesson from his actions, lesson, the danger of misguided advice. Memucan advises King Ahasuerus to depose Queen Vashti, setting in motion a series of events that lead to her removal. His advice reflects the danger of providing misguided counsel to those in authority without considering the broader consequences. It reminds us of the importance of offering wise and thoughtful advice, as hasty decisions can have far-reaching impacts. This lesson encourages us to be mindful of the guidance we provide to others and to consider the potential outcomes of our recommendations carefully. In the Book of Esther, we find a rich tapestry of characters, each offering lessons that resonate with timeless wisdom. Whether it's the courage of Esther, the loyalty of Mordecai, or the consequences of Haman's pride, these characters provide us with valuable insights into human nature and the choices we make in our own lives. In the final chapters of the Book of Esther, we witness the triumphant culmination of a remarkable journey. Esther, a young Jewish girl, chosen for such a time as this, rises from obscurity to become a queen, a courageous protector of her people, and a symbol of God's providence. The story of Esther is a testament to the power of faith, courage, and righteousness in the face of adversity. It serves as a timeless reminder that, even in the darkest of times, the light of hope can shine through when individuals choose to stand up for justice and the well-being of others. Esther's legacy continues to inspire us today, urging us to be like her, people of courage, compassion, and conviction. May her story be etched in our hearts as a reminder that, no matter our circumstances, we can make a difference in the world, for such a time as this. As we close the book of Esther, let us carry with us the enduring lessons it imparts, lessons of faith, courage, unity, and the triumph of good over evil. Let us remember Esther's unwavering resolve to protect her people and her profound impact on history. And may we, too, find the strength to rise to the challenges of our time, knowing that, like Esther, we are here for a purpose, for such a time as this. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we conclude the remarkable narrative we've explored, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude for the lessons it has imparted. We've witnessed acts of immense goodness, courage, and unwavering conviction, which have illuminated our path. We are reminded of the power of goodness that can overcome darkness, and the courage that can rise in the face of adversity. We celebrate those who have shown us the way to stand firm against malevolent intentions, even when surrounded by uncertainty and fear. In our own lives, may we embody these noble qualities, always striving to act with compassion, integrity, and the strength to oppose those who harbor ill intentions. Grant us the wisdom to recognize and confront malevolence wherever it may manifest. As we conclude this narrative, we seek your blessings upon all who have shared it with us, and we ask that its timeless message of goodness and courage continue to inspire and guide us in our daily journeys. In your name, we offer this prayer, trusting in the power of goodness and the light of courage to prevail over darkness. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.